Hello, everyone. I'm Radon Dopieralski, and uh, yeah, I, I, in my free time, I like to play with CircuitPython, maybe uh, build those nice, cool devices and program them. Uh, but uh, why would you want to make video games with that? Uh, basically, you know, when you go to an opera or when you go to a rock concert, uh, you can see that uh, there are all those professional people who worked for weeks or months to make to, together to make that uh, event happen. Or even on, at a conference like this, you have a lot of uh, work put into a single event. And uh, that's a little bit like an AAA game that you normally buy from a shop and, and play. This is a huge effort of a large number of professional people who, who do it full time. But uh, sometimes that's not the only way to like listen to music, to go to a rock concert, right? You can, you can go to a pub and uh, have some live music in there, or even you know have a jam session with your friends, or there is a busker on the streets just playing whatever instrument they play. Uh, just on the street. And uh, this is the kind of uh, game making I'm thinking about, not the AAA professional uh, thing where, you know, you spend two years, a uh, hundred people <laughs> putting their efforts together, but just, uh, you know, a, a single person uh, sitting down and, uh, you know, in two hours having a snake or a flappy beard or whatever. It's still super fun. It's still, you can still do it with friends and uh, it's super satisfying and it's a great way to learn. Uh, so uh, I have some rationals in here basically. If you do want to do it with Python on your computer, there are all those hoops you have to jump through. Uh, it used to be much worse. Now you have uh, the Mew editor, you have Pygame Zero, you have uh, all those tools that make it a little bit easier. But uh, it's still uh, difficult if you want to, for instance, package your game and distribute it so, so that others can see it. And uh, somehow you get this feeling in the back of your head that it's not really a real game. Like, it it's still feels like a toy. But uh, what if you could, uh, you know, program your own handheld game console? Uh, that, that's real enough. The games for handheld consoles usually are not that complex. Uh, they tend to be a little bit simpler and, and uh, require less work. Not always, of course. So uh, that's why. Uh, it's nice to, to, to do it in hardware, but uh, why use CircuitPython with that? Well, it's a real programming language. It's uh, not uh, like a block-based or, or, you know, like Scratch or something where you have, uh, uh, like half of the job is already done for you. You just have to fill in the gaps. In here, you are really in control. You are really learning how the game works inside. You have to actually write all, all of the code uh, for it. Uh, the Python language is popular for education, so uh, most teachers are already familiar with it. And uh, it's also pretty nice for teaching. There is great documentation for Python itself that translates into Circuit Python. So if you already know Python, you know Circuit Python. And uh, because uh, everything is installed on the device you are going to use, uh, the Circuit Python runs on the device directly. You don't have to install anything on your computer. So if it's a workshop or a lesson, like one time uh, thing, you don't have to waste your time installing things on, on uh, participants' computers. You also don't need the permissions. Uh, well, you need the permission to use the USB uh, ports, of course, on the on the computer, but that's all. 
And the uh, next thing is you are not going to break your computer. You are not going to, I don't know, install something that uh, makes your computer behave differently. Or you, don't, you will not have to reinstall your system afterwards. Because uh, all you are changing is that one device you have connected to your computer, and that device also uh, is very difficult to break. If, even if you write code that doesn't quite uh, work correctly or, or somehow corrupts the device, you can switch it off and on again, and it's back to how it was. So it's, uh, uh, you can also feel very safe while you're experimenting. And I think that's crucial that you are free to experiment and do the stupidest things, knowing that you are not able to uh, break the device with your code. Uh, next thing is that uh, because this is Python, this is an interpreted language, you don't have to compile anything. You don't have to create a hex file and drag and drop it onto the device. You don't have to muck about with uh, you know, connecting through some serial or uh, holding the device next to your uh, screen to, to flash it or something like that. It's just, uh, it's just a f it comes as a disk and uh, you just see the files there, you edit them. I, I, I will show in a moment. And the uh, last thing is portability. So one, one advantage CircuitPython has over MicroPython is that it has the same interface on every microcontroller that is supported on it. So if you write your code for, say, Raspberry Pi Pico, it will still work uh, with maybe minimal changes for, for screen or something uh, on the Pi Gamer or on the uh, Pi Batch. Uh, to get started, of course, to, to make a game for hardware, you will need hardware. So how, how to find that hardware? If you go to CircuitPy, CircuitPython's uh, main website, that's circuitpython.org, and uh, go to the downloads page, I can... This is the website, this is the download page. You have a list of every single device that is supported by CircuitPython. And uh, of course, not all of them are suitable for making the kind of games you want. You probably want some kind of a display. You probably also want to have uh, buttons on it, like here, this Pi badge looks promising. Uh, if, you, if you click on it, you will get uh, some more information about the thing. You will get uh, links to uh, firmware if you need to install it on the device. Some of those devices come already with CircuitPython installed. On some of them, you will have to install it on the device first before you can use it. And uh, yeah, you usually get a link or where you can purchase this device as well. And uh, yeah, I prepared a short list of devices you can uh, you can use uh, like the, those the most obvious those that have a screen and a direction pad and you know fire buttons on them. Of course. Nothing stops you from making games uh, that don't have, don't use buttons, use accelerometer, or use the touch screen, and so on. So that's not uh, such a full list. Uh, yeah, so I, this is the part where I show you some of those devices. Uh, yeah. uh, so uh, I will start with the uh, devices that with the simplest one of them. That was uh, the Pew Pew, which uh, that's actually upside down. And you might be familiar with the uh, badge from uh, from Pi Pi EuroPython from 2019. Uh, that looks like that. Uh, every participant got one back then. It's basically the same device. It's just a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, with this, uh, you can use the Pew uh, library that I will uh, talk about uh, in a moment. Uh, 
There is also, if you want uh, like more advanced games, you, if you want uh, some graphics, uh, you can use uh, devices that have screen on them. Uh, Adafruit sells those two devices. One is called uh, PyGamer, one is uh, called PyBadge, and the uh, PyBadge also has a light version and it has a version for uh, machine learning. Uh, in there, they also will work. And they come with uh, both the Pew library, uh, so they kind of simulate this 8x8 display uh, on the screen, but they also come with the stage and the display I/O libraries that I will explain in a, in a moment. Uh, oh, and I also made a Pew Pew version with the display that you, can, uh, you can't get it anymore because it's out of stock, but uh, just as a curiosity, it, it does exist. And uh, there are also more recent devices, like Kittenbot has made this uh, Meowbit device uh, that is kind of compatible with the micro bit because it has the same kind of connector on it. But you can also install CircuitPython on it and uh, make the same kind of, of games uh, as on the other devices. And PyMoroni has uh, made a Pico system uh, that's a very nice solid uh, aluminum case and uh, 240 by 240 display. You can also use it with CircuitPython. Uh, yeah, and of course, there is always the homebrew option. There are things like uh, display modules, uh, buttons that you can just connect to whatever device you have, uh, whatever microcontroller you want to use. And, uh, you know, 3D print your own case or laser cut it and uh, build your own uh, device from scratch. I will not be covering this, but it's completely possible. There is no magic in that. Okay, uh, we can start with the Pew Pew. So I already uh, told you this is the uh, thing uh, that we used as the badge uh, two years ago. We only on, also had uh, some workshops uh, on EuroPython. We will have more workshops during the sprint. So if you are interested in trying this out and uh, getting one of your, uh, for yourself, you can, you can come to the sprints and uh, try uh, working on them with us. They have an uh, 8 by 8 display with uh, pixels that can have uh, one of the four levels of, of uh, brightness, basically, and they have six buttons for directions and for A and B, basically. That seems very, very simple and very limited, but you can actually make all sorts of interesting games with this, starting with this snake game, you know, from the Nokia phones, but uh, also Tetris, Sokoban, uh, Boulder Dash, we have Frogger, we have Otello, a logic game uh, with actual uh, computer player that plays against you. Uh, you could do trackers, I guess, because 8x8, eight eight, that's perfect for trackers. Uh, so there's a, there is all sorts of, of simple game. You could do Flappy Beard, you know. And uh, because this is only 8x8, eight eight, you don't have to create your own graphics. So it's uh, super fast for you. Uh, there is this problem with making games where people start doing the graphics and they just stay there and they get stuck in, in you know, because making graphics is fun, but uh, the goal is to finish the game in, during, during the workshop. So uh, if you remove this uh, time consuming part, maybe it's a bit less fun, but at, at least you get to finish the game. The devices themselves are pretty affordable. You can uh, get the Pew Pews themselves uh, for about $10 plus shipping. Uh, so uh, you also will need uh, batteries for them, of course. And they are open hardware. So if you need your own version of a Pew Pew, you just download the design files, modify it in any way you want, 
send it to the manufacturer, any, any manufacturer you choose, and uh, they will make it for you. Uh, right. The, uh, sorry about that. The library documentation is literally one page of uh, A4 format. But we also have uh, example games in there. We have step-by-step -step tutorials. So, and we are working on, on uh, uh, making more useful materials for, for teachers, basically, for lessons. Uh, by the way, if you are a teacher and you are interested in this, uh, please find me and talk to me, because uh, I, we, we only have basically experience with workshops, so any feedback from a teacher, what works in a lesson, what works in a school environment would be very useful to us. Okay, the next one. The next one is the one that does actual graphics. I can show you. Sorry. Um, let me switch it on. So this is the game selection menu and I can uh, let's say we will select this one. So this is an example game uh, written in uh, using the stage library in CircuitPython. Of course, it also uses some graphics that uh, you had to uh, draw yourself. And uh, yeah, you can walk around, you can shoot, you can jump. You can climb the layer there. Sorry for the... Oh, and you can die, of course. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be a game, right? If you can't fail. Uh, so this kind of, this kind of uh, games is what I'm talking about here. And uh, the library itself is already built in in PyGamer and PyBatch, and of course the PewPew M4. Uh, you get uh, graphics, uh, depending on the device, the resolution is a little bit different, but you can scale it to, the, to fill the screen. Uh, you get sprites, you get uh, tiled backgrounds, uh, you can display text, and you can do beeps, and that's basically it. But it's all you need. All the sprites, uh, all the graphics you use is 16 by 16 images, so they are pretty fast to draw. They are not too many pixels. Uh, you only get to use 16 colors in them, and uh, ma you get maximum of 16 frames of animation for them. But uh, that's uh, enough for, for you know, a simple game like this. Right now we only have two example games uh, in there. There is not much documentation. There is a learn guide on, in the Adafruit system, but it's just a bouncing ball. We don't really have tutorials for a proper game. We are working on that. It's, it's a community effort. Uh, how it actually works. So if you look at the screen from, screenshot from, from such a game, uh, you can see there is actually a quite a lot of detail. The problem with microcontrollers is that you don't have that much uh, RAM memory in, on them. Like the, the, the smallest devices I use only have 32 kilobytes of RAM. That's, that's not enough to even fit the image of the screen in that. So how do you display anything if you can't even fit your pixels in your memory? The idea is that you divide your screen into tiles, and each tile uses a smaller pixel, a smaller picture, and those pic because those pictures repeat, they use much less memory. And here you can see we have two, la two layers of those tiles. One is doing the uh, blue background and the uh, ladders in there. And the second one is actually shifted by half a tile to uh, easier make the corners of the, of the 
of the bricks in there and uh, uses a different set of, of 16 by 16 tiles. And then on top of that, of course, you don't always have uh, things that align to, to tiles. You, ha you want to have things that move freely, like the enemies and the player character and so on. So on top of that, you can also have sprites. And those layers can be mixed in any, uh, in any order you want. So you can have tiles that are in front of the sprites as well, and you can have text in there as well. So that's the basic idea with this. Uh, the graphics are actually BMP files that contain 16 uh, frames in each of the file. And uh, yeah, those are the uh, example ones from the uh, from the game, except I replaced the pink background with white because uh, the pink color is a special color that is transparent in this in this uh, game engine. So yeah, as I said, you use BMP or GIF files, actually GIF files. The prono proper pronunciation is GIF, uh, and the pink color is transparent. If you need to have something pink but not transparent, you need to like make it one of uh, a little bit less pink than, than... Usually you can tell the difference by looking at it. You can create the sprites themselves using uh, the uh, as a sprite or li liber sprite open source programs, or you can even use uh, pscale, which is a web-based uh, graphics editor for sprites. So that's, uh, you still don't have to install anything on your computer. And uh, you also have sound. You can play WAV files. And the uh, easiest way to generate like computer-like Computer game-like sounds, like beeps and uh, laser sounds and things like that, is to use uh, a utility program that's called SFXR. It also has a web-based version, uh, so you also don't have to install it. Uh, you have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, knobs to turn there to generate the exact sounds that you like, and then you, it generates a WAV file that you can use. And then, of course, you will have to make uh, some maps for your game and things like that. And here the engine doesn't help you. You will have to be creative and either use text files or maybe JSON or whatever uh, to, to make those for yourself. Uh, to, to actually get the details on how to use this circuit by uh, this, this state library, there is a URL in here. I won't get into details. I won't be showing you code because uh, we simply don't have enough time for this. And uh, the last way I want to uh, talk to you about uh, making games is by using the display I.O. library. So the state library was uh, written by me specifically to make this kind of simple games like platformers, uh, shooters, and so on. And it has a lot of, of limitations. All the sprites have to be 16 by 16. You only get 16 colors. You only get a limited number of layers and so on. Uh, I did that all to make it as fast as possible and as fluent as possible in there. But uh, there is a, a library built into CircuitPython itself that's called Display.io that, <coughs> sorry, that lets you do the, all the same things and more without those limitations. So you get uh, sprites of any size. You get uh, bitmap graphics that are loaded directly from the disk so they don't use uh, a pram. You still get sprites and tiles in there, but you also get uh, like vector graphics, shapes, uh, circles, rectangles, rounded rectangles, text labels. Uh, you get uh, different fonts you can load. So the state library has a one built-in font that you can use. In here you can, uh, you know, just uh, use any BDF font you, you find. Uh, the downside of it is that it's a little bit less fluent and uh, might require a little bit uh, faster microcontroller to run. 
and maybe more memory as well. But, uh, you know, it's still, and of course it's a little bit more complex to use. So, uh, but it's only for graphics. So you game, your game is usually not just graphics. So you will you have to use also other lib libraries in, uh, in CircuitPython. But uh, don't worry, they are all there, they are available. There is image loader library that lets you load BMP or GIF files uh, easily. There is uh, audio core, audio IO, and then uh, either audio PWM IO, audio bus IO, or uh, yeah, audio IO itself for outputting sound. Depending on how you have your speaker connected to the device, you will use one of those. There is audio mixer and audio MP3 for you know advanced use for sound. You can have several things making sounds at once, and you can even play MP3 files uh, if your microcontroller is fast enough for that, of course. And then you have the keypad library and the uh, touch I/O and analog I/O libraries uh, for doing the buttons or like. Uh, you know, fruits used as buttons, or uh, you know, uh, a joystick, or whatever you need uh, in your particular device. Yeah, so basically that's it. That should get you started. Uh, you can uh, find me, uh, and uh, you can come to the sprints if you are interested in like uh, seeing more details. There is also uh, excellent documentation and excellent uh, uh, help available from Adafruit. Adafruit is the company that develops CircuitPython. It's an open source project, uh, and it's developed in the open, but they hire several full-time developers to work on it, and they pay them for, for that, so, so that project uh, is really developing uh, on, a, on a good pace. Uh, there is, they have a help with CircuitPython channel on their Discord, which is the single best place to uh, ask questions about anything related to CircuitPython. And you can also find me on uh, mastodon.technology. Uh, my nick is the Shippu. And uh, if you are interested in my other projects and uh, my hardware hacking, you can go to Hackaday.io and uh, search for the Shippu. You can see everything I do with, uh, with hardware in there. That's uh, everything I have. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the talk. We do have time for questions. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just walk to the mic uh, so that everybody can hear it. Hi, uh, thank you for a great talk. I, I am a teacher, um, and uh, so I was interested in those links. Have you have you tried these out at kids clubs at all? Um, in, um, uh, sorry, can, can you repeat? Have you tried out some of these um, devices with kids clubs, programming clubs, and things like that? No, so far I have only done workshop with adults, and uh, the the problem is I'm not very good at with kids. I'm a bit scared of doing this with kids, so. That's one reason why we want uh, feedback from teachers. We have made like five or six workshops uh, with, uh, with uh, people from all sort of experience with Python, from Python developers to people completely new to Python, but it was always adults. Cool. Uh, do you have any other question? Any question from remote attendants? Um, so, yeah, so I, I got one question just uh, to ask. Uh, in the development flow from somebody having an idea of uh, developing some game with CircuitPython and uh, implementing it, could, could you give us an overview of how that works from, well, implementing some code, I suppose, and then how the workflow comes okay. to that end? Actually, I can, I can show you how you would uh, do it. That's actually a great idea. I didn't think about it. So I have a micro USB cable here. Uh, and I have the CircuitPython 
uh, the, the badge from three years ago. I switch it on. Uh, it was switched on and it ran out of battery, so maybe I will use a different one. Yeah, by default it displays a menu that lets you select from the games that are already on there. But if I connect it to the computer, um, and of course the law of of live demos. Let's try a different. Sorry about that. Okay, it comes as a disk. And on that disk, you can see the uh, Python files that are on the device. Now, uh, by default, it will run the main.py file. That's where the menu is uh, coded. You can see the code for the menu here, actually. But if you create a code.py file instead, it will run this by default. Uh, you can see the screen is empty. Because the file is empty, it, it finished executing that file. Uh, I can open it, and I can start reading my code. So I will start by importing, let me make the font a bit bigger. I'm importing the pure library. I need to initialize it. I will make a screen uh, image that is by default 8 by 8. I can uh, I can put a pixel that is at coordinates 3 by 3 and has color 3. And I can display it on the display. And I will need to have a empty loop at the end, because otherwise it will go to the REPL immediately and we will not be able to see anything. You can see the display is here, that the pixel is visible on the device. So if I wanted to make it move, for instance, I would, uh, I would need to check uh, what buttons are pressed, and uh, if, say, I would uh, move this in here, mm, if keys and uh, pew dot key up is pressed, then y is reduced by one, we will put x and y as the coordinates. We need to initialize them, of course. And we will need to delete the previous uh, let's say, position of the pixel. And that should, uh, no, we will need Oh, we don't need this line. OK, that should give us some interaction. And I got an error. OK, so because we ha don't have a display here, I can see the error. So the solution is either to use an editor like Mu that uh, gives you the access to the serial console or use uh, serial console from the terminal. I can do that. Module object has no attribute get pressed. That is because it's not called get pressed. I mixed up with a different library. It's called keys.
Hmm. Oh, I forgot to show it on the screen, of course. And uh, let's initialize it to something else than zero, zero, because we only have moving up here. So we have our pixels, uh, pixel, and if I press the up key, it's very fast, moves up, because I forgot to wait. Uh, we can wait for one sixth of a second to have it move slower. So that's uh, uh, how that's how you begin with the pew pew with a very simple game. I won't, I can't really show you how you begin with graphics and so on because this is you you start with spending two hours drawing your graphics, of course. So we don't have time for that. But we can do that during the sprint if you are interested. Okay. Yeah, that was that was very clear. Thank you. Thank you very much for the for the live demo. Do you have any other any other question in the room? Yes. Is there any emulator where you could run this while you get your hardware in case you start off with a like online course while you build uh, momentum for people? Or? So uh, there is no emulator for the stage and display I.O. I think there is some uh, work on doing, making display I.O. work with Blinka. Blinka is an emulator for CircuitPython in general on devices like Raspberry Pi. However, if you go to the pewpew, uh, we have a pewmulator, which is basically a library that uses uh, Pygame to display uh, this 8x8 this, this display and give you the key presses. So if you just drop pew.py next, uh, next to your code file and just run this code file with Python 3, you won't be emulating the circuit Python. It will be Python 3 instead. So some things can be a little bit different. Like you would suddenly have 8 gigabytes of memory, for instance. But uh, you can develop your games on your computer, and it can also be a bit more convenient that way, so you don't have to you know, look at the device all the time. However, because of the differences, you, you are encouraged to also test it on the device at the end, because uh, sometimes I, I write a game using the emulator, and it then doesn't fit on the device, which is a very sad thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Do we have any other questions in the room? No? Uh, well, we've got a final one for you. Uh, so when you, you demonstrated the sprites and the use of uh, assets in, in, in the game, so do you, when you are running the game, do you have a, a runtime that offers your file system or you need to do something with those assets so that they work on the game? Okay. No, the, you, you just copy the, the, all the assets to the disk, same as, as the code. So it's just sitting right there. You can make like subdirectories to sort this, of course, to, to make it more manageable, but it's just a simple drag and drop thing. Okay. You just have to make sure that BMP files are 16 color, not real, real you know, the, not the 16 bit color, but 16 colors. For a bit. Okay, thank you very much. So, last chance for questions. And if not, so let's uh, give uh, our uh, speaker another round of applause. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the mirror.